Woohoo! I'm gonna make some noise at the beginning so the sound editor has something to cut. Dun dun. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Snarkle Talks, your go to podcast for Kendama creativity and community. I'm Kelly, your host, and I'm thrilled to have you join us for another episode. If you tuned in last week, you know we started a fantastic conversation, and today we're diving right back in where we left off. Joining us again is Tio Fiorina, the dynamo behind the European Kendama Championship. Tio captivated us with his stories and insights, and he's here to keep that Kendama spirit burning bright. For those who are new, Tio is a pillar of the Kendama community, inspiring players and fans with his passion and innovative approach to competitions. So, grab your Kendama, find your favorite spot, and get ready as we continue our journey with Tio. There's plenty more to explore, and we promise today's episode is packed with even more Kendama thrills. Also, I might cry a little. Stay tuned. You definitely don't want to miss a moment of today's exciting continuation. So the competitors, when they show up to the event, what does it take to be an EKC competitor? What do you think will get you not just to the top, but through your own division? Mm. Well, first of all, as you've said, the level is incredibly high. So Mm -hmm. for that top division, of course, just like any other Kanawa event, you have to be an insanely proficient Kanawa player. And then um, you have to learn to feed off the crowd and to fully get into the groove of the event. The rhythm is fast paced. The freestyle just clicks like round, 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 decision, round, 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 decision. I timed it compared to other freestyles, and it's the fastest one. There's an atmosphere, and it's a freight train, so you have to be ready to match that rhythm. You have to match our MC's rhythm, because their job is also very difficult. So for EKC, you really have to be ready for the smoke. Mm -hmm. Just come ready to immerse yourself into this competition, and then the level of focus that you have to find. I mean, the atmosphere is crazy. The sound is crazy like i've been to a lot of parties and events at this club and i'm always watching the decibel meter and at ekc i saw it peaking like 115 120 and my face is red i'm looking at the manager of the club and he goes over to the mics and he's like turning down the mics and then i go look back at the decibel meter and i I see 120 and i'm like looking at him and he's like yeah we can't do anything about this (laughs) everyone's just crazy and you're supposed to compete in all of this yeah unless you're feeding off that energy you're not going to be able to measure if you're stoic and stiff it's just going to eat you alive yeah there's no other way of looking at it you just have to be fully immersed in the room's energy the freestyle style of event really requires that it requires the participation of everybody like you were saying right there's no spectator if you're in the audience you're giving hype yeah if you're on the stage you're giving your all to perform in front of these people and it's a back and forth play between those energies when i think about kendama how you show respect as a spectator is different right? In times of concentration, you want to be able to give concentration. Yeah. And in times of energy, you want to be able to give that type of hype. Yeah, you have to adapt to the competition. When you get onto the stage at KWC, there's this reverence. Mm. The stage is massive. It's huge. Does it have to be this big? You're on a continent and you feel this sense of reverence and you see the KWC logo. The first person is three to four meters off the stage and it's just like, The pressure is different there. Mm. It's really different. And EKC is, you have to come in with a different mindset. You're in this dark industrial looking room. You're not in a big gymnasium. There's pillars all around you and these big containers and the DJ's right next to you. And you have all these people just lined up against the stage. Like that's really different. We have open at EKC as well. And open at EKC is a party. At other events, open is like we're watching lawn bowling. It's very reverent, the polite clapping, and you have that rhythm at EKC of the silence, noise, but at EKC, there's also the DJ, 
And that was pretty much the first time I'd seen that in an open division where our DJ and much loved figure in the economic community, DJ Salvador Aldi, was playing the tail end of like a three hour set and absolutely massacring it, doing outrageous stuff. It was so good. The whole crowd was just nonstop head bobbing. I've never seen that at a Kanam event to that level. And then the competitors, like if you've watched the Yasu and Shredwin match, was it in that match? Oh no, it was in the match before. These two players just feeding off of each other. And then Yasu is like holding his inward lunar after the rising dragon. And he knows the song that's coming on and you see his head bobbing and he knows when the drop comes and he just spikes it as the drop goes and the crowd goes wild. And that's just another part of what you need to be ready for when you come to EKC is just countless highlight moments. The whole event is a highlight and everyone is just constantly popping off. It was just unlike anything I've ever seen in Kanama. Yeah. Yeah. What role do you want EKC to play in how Kendama in general and Kendama comps move in the future? What do you want EKC to be for that? First of all, I think EKC has become a culture. There's such a thing as the EKC culture, and I've seen it affect everyone. And like, I think what EKC culture at its basis is just like to be bewildered, to get excited, to get loud, and to get hyped to move as a unit, to have the crowd, the music work together. And that feeds the player. And like when I went to KWC, there was a freestyle showcase that Catch and Flow was throwing. And they'd gotten this sick lineup of Japan versus the world. And as soon as it was starting, I was just sitting there. And I was like, why am I sitting? I'm sick of sitting. And all these players here are all on their toes, excited. And so I walk over to the stage, you know, I cross this line. And like, I'm alone and I put both of my elbows on the stage and I look over my shoulder and I see Soma and he just whispers, he says, EKC, and I nod. And then that's his trigger. And he just jumps up and starts yelling something in Japanese. And then all this crew looks around like what's happening and they all just start coming up to the stage and we all start making noise. And like all these other Japanese people are looking at us bewildered, but some of them know, some of them have seen the images. And so... When the players start playing, you have Takuya and Nick Gallagher in a freestyle match. Of course, incredible. And the excitement rises. And I see the EKC energy at KWC. And that's when I know that's how EKC culture can affect these Kanama events. Yeah. It's just taking all of these figures of the Kanama communities around the world and showing them that. And that's one of my biggest goals with EKC and something I do that's different from other event organizers is I reach out to players and handpick a squad, like a lineup. And I make monetary investments into bringing these people here. And I talk to these people for months and I build up expectations. So it's like helping other events, getting more entertaining, catering that lineup and just spreading it from person to person. And if you come to EKC, you experience it. And to me, it's like, bring that wherever you are. Keep this energy with you wherever you are and this ideal. And that's how I see EKC influencing other Kanama events and Kanama players and communities and Kanama brands. That's how I see it now. I started tearing the idea of not rushing the stage because that's not what you did, but the proverbial, like you rushed the stage to be the hype for the crowd, right? You were the one that broke the mold in that moment. But EKC is the thing also that's breaking the mold in the Kendama competition scene. And it made me think of the event that I want to create and how I look up to EKC and the passion that I get caught up in and all like teary and <laughs> and emotional is the thing that I think you bring. And so you're doing the thing. You're already doing the thing I want you to know. <laughs> yeah, and that's the perfect response. And <laughs> EKC is that for so many people. I'm just being a vehicle and a mirror for what I've seen there. I've seen so much crying at EKC. Like <laughs> my good friend Toplach, Thomas, legend of the European scene, a great homie of mine. Second day, this was during Rudney and Yasu's match. And I'm next to Toplar, and as Yasu's doing all these things on stage, I see Toplar stand up and lose his mind. And then 
turned to me with tears on his face and just grabs my shoulder and he's just saying thank you and i'm just like dude thank you and i'm just throughout the whole event that's the theme like people just bawling <laughs> like crying of happiness and it's sick it's incredible all these people just coming together and the emotion it elicits is really really insane and yeah yeah just hearing about it is overwhelmingly joyful yeah 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 i, I cannot wait <laughs> it's gut-wrenching like i really want it to come tomorrow yeah <laughs> i can't wait every year i'm so relieved when it's done you mm -hmm. know I'm just happy to have accomplished it. And every year I'm thinking like, oh, there's no way I'm going to be more excited for this. This was the first one. Oh, this was the second one. I'm just as excited for the third one. Yeah. And it's so infectious. I was at a Kanam event in Romania. The number of people coming up to me and talking or the people at the local sessions every weekend or the people I'm going to see at Kanam events at the end of the month. It's just like every single person that comes up to me has a look now. <laughs> They have a look like I'm it's beautiful. I love seeing that and just being like, you know, you're excited too, right? And yeah, it's just that's how every single conversation goes. It's, it's crazy. I, I am so grateful. And I love that you are getting to feel the love for all of the work and time and energy and blood, sweat and tears that you've put into this. It makes me feel so good that you get to feel that appreciation because what you're doing is really special. If people wanted to get involved, either show up, compete, volunteer, mm -hmm. how would they go about getting involved with EKC? Course attending is number one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then my channel is always open to anyone and for anything, you know, like just reaching out to me about EKC and then... Um, yeah, it's just think about something weird. Like think about something new that you don't really see at a Kanama event. At EKC, I have something called branded events where companies can basically do their own mini event within the event. And it's just like they can host a certain contest or do anything. Some of the companies this year are doing some new stuff I can't wait to announce. That's awesome. But I feel like we're just scratching the surface with that. There's just a million ways of doing that. And then when it comes to the organization, I'm a one-person operation with a bunch of advisors and helpers. And yeah, I always feel like there's room for more. And I'm slowly learning to do all of this and slowly amassing some form of infrastructure to be able to do it. You know? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, EKC is a, it's a business and it's something that I'm learning to get a hold of, you know, and get a grip on. And we just need some of everything. Like... To be a part of a Kanama event, you have to forget how to be a player sometimes. And you have to think outside of that. And then you have to think about what can I bring to the table that's new? And that's how you get involved in anything. It's just mm -hmm. starting a conversation, amassing experience, and yeah, just being a bit brazen as well and just asking, how can I participate? Yeah, <laughs> I love that. You got to shoot your shot. If you want to do a thing, you got to shoot your shot. How... How do you want fans of EKC to keep that spirit alive throughout the year and keep EKC at the forefront of our memories so that when it comes back around, we know. We're like, we have been here all year long. Yeah, I mean, bringing EKC culture everywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's a way of interacting with it as a fan and an involved individual because that's something that also ties into your own philosophy for Kanam events and just existence within a Kanam happening. And another thing is just being a vehicle for the information. So talking about it to everyone mm -hmm. is a way of helping it and yeah, just engaging with it and then sharing the images and being an online presence because a lot of how we exist is online. And then also supporting me in a way is a way of uh, being a fan and helping me do this. So when I'm posting something, read it. When I'm calling out to the community, answer or offer up your help. Or there's ways to support each other that aren't always the ways that you think. I may be a Kendama pro and you can buy my Kendama, but there's also a million other ways of supporting me that can have much more positive impact. Yeah, I had a talk recently with someone and... The share, like, subscribe, comment, leave a message 
honestly, it does a lot. Even if we're not playing to the algorithm, just knowing that someone out there is listening to what we're having to say and responding to it is a big deal. Yeah, it's massive. Yeah. You're talking to an audience every time you're putting anything out. So it's always massive when someone answers, especially when it's positive. It's just like, that's one of the ways of doing that. Yeah. Yeah. As we close out, are there any last thoughts that you wanted to share um, that we didn't get to touch on before? Mm, yeah, I mean, we were talking about me being a competitor, and I had this thought that came out of my mind. And it's that running EKC has completely changed my outlook as well on being a competitor and uh, a player. And it's just like I used to like I used to get tagged in so much Kanama play and sometimes being listed as the people's favorite like player or whatever. And now it's different where I'm not being listed as that, but I'm feeling happier about the respect and the sense of camaraderie with some of the Kanama owners mm -hmm. and those event running businesses. And that's another just small tidbit and transition in my Kanama journey that I wanted to mention as an event organizer and it happens to a lot of players around the world and it's something I want to encourage and I want people to really become involved in Kanama for that sense of purpose within the the effort and Kanama events are one of the best mediums for that just being a new figure within our community and finding a new place that's one of my biggest pieces of advice for professional Kanama players out there and players who have honed in their skills is to always think about the next thing if you care about Kanama and repurpose your attention and find another way of being productive within the sphere of Kanama community. Yeah. Oh, now that you've said that, it made me think of how do you get fulfillment in Kanama, right? As a player, there's a level of celebrity that you have as a pro player that is interesting. But when you really embed yourself in the community and you start making the connections with businesses, with the other players, with the fans, is what you're saying that you find a lot of fulfillment or more fulfillment in that space than you did just being a pro player. Absolutely. Yeah. Could not have imagined it, but I feel a sense of fulfillment that dwarfs my competitive achievement. And of course, I value those, but I was competing at the recent event. And during the competition, at some point, I was like, I just wasn't feeling the same enjoyment I used to and the same drive I used to from competing. And I just had to take a step back and be like, why is that? And I was like, oh, right. It's just that different drive that you've just got into. And it's just an interesting transition for me and for a lot of people as well. And you can figure it out as you're doing it. Just pay attention to what you're feeling and pay attention to what's bringing you more fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's been working within the sphere of Kanama happenings, Kanama culture and media. And then the competition aspect has completely fallen off for me, where it's just like, I feel no particular closeness to it anymore as a player. Yeah. I still absolutely love playing Kanan and play it a lot. And every Sunday we compete in our own ways, but it's more like playing together. And then that's just something like there's a million ways of feeling fulfilled within Kanan. And that's amazing. Yeah. And it's just like, I've seen so many players run into dead ends in their heads and falling off and i'm just like there's a creative sphere in kanama that you know you can touch upon everywhere on the sphere is just something new and different and i invite everyone to go exploring try to figure out exactly what your calling is in kanama and for most people it won't be competition yeah that's just how it is and i feel like that's okay and that's really sick i mean i was competing at the highest level only two years ago and in that short span of time i've completely look the other way you know yeah and i love that <laughs> it's just so sick yeah you can just completely change on a dime and if you just abandon yourself to this new passion the old one even though it was your whole world for a little while or something you were focused on completely it just fades away a little bit and yeah it's fine i may come back to competing i'm also not closing that door but yeah it's just something something cool to think about yeah, it's a different take on Kendama is life, mm -hmm. right? Like when you're just trying to land the cool trick, it's not as fulfilling as if you were building community. And I think that that is such a poignant thing to say. And I love that you brought that up. Thank you. Yeah, with pleasure. It's really been something on my mind. And it's like, 
there's a place in this community for everyone. Sometimes I feel like some of the things that exist in this community is just an oversaturation. And it feels like there could be a more balanced scale on some of it. But everything is essential. The tricks are essential. The competitors are essential. The community builders, the company owners, everything is essential. But never close off one of those things to yourself and explore them all. And yeah, that's one of my biggest pieces of advice for players is to avoid that brick wall Yeah, that I've seen so many people hit. It's actually insane over the years. And it happens in every walks of life. Take a step back from that thing you're hyper fixating on for a second and look elsewhere and adapt. Yeah. The thing that you're saying is we are whole people, mm -hmm. right? As humans, as Kendama players, we have other skills that we can utilize in this space that make us yeah. more proficient, yeah. more embedded, more important. We have filmmakers and photographers and organizers and artists. We are so many things. And just bringing more of ourselves to the table is more fulfilling. Yeah, absolutely. We are more than just the Instagram post, you know? Yeah, and it's a way of interacting with Kendama as a subculture and understanding it on a deeper level. Understanding that all the building blocks of Kendama are building blocks that you find everywhere else in the world, in every other infrastructure, every other sports community. It's just you have to interact with Kendama in ways that will build the blocks for a subculture. Yeah. If you look at skateboarding, you have to be making moves that have been made in skateboarding and you have to be thinking big. And it's just like, you're not going to be doing that by just boxing yourself in. You have to really figure out how to interact with Kendama as this infrastructure and that it exists within the realms of taxes, within the realms of all these mundane things. And that's just how we're going to legitimize it even further. If the people take it seriously in ways that other people have taken it seriously. And it's something I had a huge problem with at the beginning, actually, mm. because I was having problems interacting with other people who didn't see it that way. So it's just like always remember as well that other people have different levels of investment in it and then always work towards proving to that other person that this is a culture and that this exists within the realm of I don't know, civilization, yeah, capitalism, all of that. It's like if you're fully committed to that ideal, it'll rub off on other people. Yeah. I find running into people who don't have a ton of imagination mm -hmm. on what the future could look like. Ooh, I want to be on my soapbox and just like, you're doing it wrong. But there is this idea of if we build it, this Kendama industry right? It's an industry because it's not just, oh, we're going to play a game. It can be live streaming. It can be events. It can be magazines, TV shows, YouTube channels. It could be so many things outside of just one toy. And I totally agree that the way to legitimize our industry is to be creative and bold. Yeah. And to interact with it as such. Yeah. Like just fully encapsulate what you want this to become. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Just be faithful to that ideal. Because if you're not going to do that, then no one else is going to take it seriously. That's what I do every time I walk into a room. Kadama's on my chest. And it happens to me so often now because EKC has become pretty much a full-time thing. And it's still surreal that that's the case. It's just like, oh, shit. This is rent. This is all that stuff. And it's just you have to really soak that in. And every time you're interacting with someone, just own that part of it. It's like this thing is insanely legitimate. Yeah. Yeah. It's a job. This is a career and a job for people who really want to make it that. Yeah. Oh, I, I am. Oh, I absolutely believe that there are ways to get paid to do kendama related things that we are just not trying to even yeah yeah i mean once again anyway anyone else is getting paid within those other subcultures it's coming and yeah there's just this huge amount of new companies for example and it's nuts there's a lot of new ways that we're going to find to monetize it 
And it all comes down to bringing new people into the fold. Mm -hmm. If I want to be able to live from this, and if other people like me want to be able to live from this, it's important that every single move you make works towards that. That's the biggest thing right now. We have to bring more people into Kanama if it's to sustain us. Yeah. Like there's Kanama companies in Europe that are not involved in Kanama culture at all. They sell Kanamas. That's it. Mm -hmm. So they go around markets on the weekends. They go around conventions mm -hmm. and they sell Kanamas there and they don't sponsor EKC. They don't go to Kanama events and every single place they go to like this, they bring people into the pie. And it's like, on one hand, I'm like, ah, oh, it's kind of counterculture not to be part of the culture. And then on the other hand, I'm like, but you're also doing the thing that I said is the most important. And there's just a million ways of putting value into your Kanama work. And it's just like, don't look at this other Kanama company. Try to bring value in another way. Yeah. And you guys are doing that with Snarkle Rocks for sure, because you're definitely not like any other Kanama company out there <laughs> in a great way, because that could also be in a terrible way. But you guys are doing something completely different just from the visual identity to these new things you're trying to these micro adjustments. Yeah, that's what it's about. You're definitely not a copy paste Kanama company. You are your own thing. And that's what I would encourage all these companies to be doing is just try these little, little jumps, these little things. Yeah, they, it's scary. I do understand that it's scary to have the newness of it all. Yeah, terrifying. But also because we're not a Kendama company and I haven't been playing Kendama for decades, I don't have the same hangups. I can think outside of a box more than someone who has had a kendama in their hand for a decade. My ideas may not be the best, but they're different in a way that I think allows us to be a separate niche within the niche. Absolutely. And I'm really proud of that. Thank you for saying it. Yeah, with pleasure. And it's how I feel about a bunch of new companies as well is trying something new and then Sometimes the rules are blurry because there are no rules, but there are these parameters to existing within the Kanama community that are important. And there are these things that people value more than others. And some entities are working towards that in insane ways and some just aren't. And that's just the reality of it. If you take Sweets, for example, with its all-encompassing desire to integrate Kanama to pop culture, mm -hmm. that's their whole thing. For the most part, it's not subtle. It's just, let's put the Kanama into this person's hands. And that's just it. Mm -hmm. It's just about being there. And it's, that's what a lot of Kanama companies should strive to be, you know? Like putting the thing into people's hands. <laughs> yeah. When you mentioned there are small companies that sell Kandamas that just go to cultural affairs. Like, we should do that. It's essential. We should be doing that. Why are we not part of their community too? Yeah. Not just why are they not part of ours? Yeah, absolutely. It's about outreach and mm -hmm. we see it in Kanama and our communities everywhere. There's people from so many different backgrounds like BMXing and scooter riding and... Yo-yos. Yeah, yo-yos and tricking and, oh my God, chess. I could name so many people in a Kanama community that just come from all these different backgrounds and it's just like, keep reaching out. Keep invading their place. <laughs> Keep spearheading Kanama pretty much everywhere you go and try to find these new communities. I'm starting to work with someone in Berlin who's huge in the Flinto community in Berlin. They've reached out to me and have asked me to help them with spreading Kanama there because they feel this intense rush of passion coming. And that's amazing. And that's a sector of our demographic that's not being reached as much. It's like we have had enough people make Kanama attractive to mostly men and cis males. And it's just like, I want to support that as much as I can because this person is just going for it. And it's not just because it's the Flinta community. It's just because this person has a vision about a certain demographic they want to reach. You know, it's just like, find that community that you want to reach out to and maybe cater Kanama to them. Of course, Kanama is about inclusivity. But if you're going to make this part of this community's identity, you have to understand this community. And that's how Kendama will have an impact. I encourage everyone to go out there and try to find these hidden communities and peoples that we haven't found yet. And Kendama is just the most easy to understand object for just the stupidest reason. <laughs> It's a little cup with a ball and it's dope that you can reach basically anyone across the planet with it. And yeah, go reach that community. We need them, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, we do. Because we all have separate communities, right? Like I have friends who don't play Kendama. Yeah, absolutely. And I have communities that don't interact. And I can be the bridge between the magic cards that I really love Sick. and Sick. and the Kendama community. Like I can be that bridge. And I think that the reminder to be the one who spreads the love. Yeah. I think that that's amazing. If you don't mind, I would love it if you could tell the people where they could learn more about EKC and more about you. If you could leave us your contact info. So you can learn more about EKC at EU Kendama Champ on Instagram. And then you can learn more about me at Theodore Fiorina on Instagram as well. Or on YouTube if you look me up. There's stuff there. Also, maybe on Spotify, there's other podcasts where I may be talking about similar things, but probably not because <laughs> we explored a lot today, which is dope. And yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. We will put all of the linky things in the description below. So if you didn't see it in the captions, it'll all be there for you to click. Thank you so much for chatting with me. We will talk again soon. And I will ooh, also leave all of the links and information for EKC like the dates and all of that in the description below too. So if people have any questions, it'll be there. Absolutely. Yee, thank you so much. And we will talk again soon. Yes. Bye. Bye. And that wraps up another electrifying episode of Snarkle Talks. A massive thank you to Tio Fiorina for joining us again and sharing his infectious energy and deep insights into the EKC. For all our listeners, don't forget to follow Tio's journey and check out the EKC by clicking the links that we've shared below. If you've enjoyed our chat today, why not share this episode with a friend or leave us a review? We love hearing from you, and it helps spread the Kendama love far and wide. Before we go, did you know that the albatross can sleep while flying? These large seabirds are known for their incredible stamina and ability to fly great distances over the oceans. Scientists have found that they can grab bits of sleep in short bursts while cruising through the air. This ability helps them conserve energy during their long flights across vast expanses of water. While I am neither flying nor a bird, it is my nap time now, so I'm going to go do that. Thanks for tuning into Snarkle Talks. We're here to bring you the best of the Kendama world, episode by episode. Until next time, may your lighthouses always be upright. Have a good one. <laughs>